Today I'm going to be looking at the Barracuda uh, Spam and Virus Firewall 200. Um, this thing is essentially a piece of crap. It uses incredibly cheap hardware. Uh, I've heard the software is actually quite good, but, you know, so what? They're, they charge, I think, $2,000 for this thing, and I believe they actually still make this particular one. It's the uh, BSF 200A, and it's, it's built with the cheapest stuff you could possibly have. Um, I just want to make a video of it before I throw most of it away because part of it doesn't work. Uh, and then maybe I'll do a more interesting video. Ooh. As soon as I can find room on my desk for it. This is the inside of the thing. It, uh, I've been in here a bunch of times, so there's obviously no serial ATA cable and no memory. I've taken those out and I don't know where I put them. Um, this machine uses just a standard commodity Asus motherboard. It's actually the AT3GC-I. Uh, it's an Atom-based motherboard. It uses the 330 Atom processor, which is 1.6 gigahertz, dual core plus hyper-threading, uh, the GMA950 graphics chip, and uh, the 945GC chipset. Uh, this board is non-functional it wouldn't boot the fan would kick on but nothing would happen I replaced a bunch of the caps on it didn't fix it I noticed that there's a uh, small voltage regulator surface mount one tucked behind here that is getting up to 60 degrees Celsius and yeah I can't really get in there I don't really care enough about this board to try and fix it and yeah so I'm gonna take I took off half the caps I put on you know, I want my good Sanyo caps back. Um, yeah, so I took off took off most of the caps, and I'm just gonna throw it away when I'm done. Here's a lot of the cabling on this thing. Um, much of it is not used, as they have connectors for a floppy drive and a serial ATA connector for power, which is funny because they actually use a serial ATA drive, it just can't reach. So they've used an adapter and hot glued it together and to the case originally, which is just really cheap. And you know, you got this uh, bundle of cables going to the front panel, ATX power, 12 volt power for the power, uh, the CPU. And all of this was just kind of jammed in here very horribly. Uh, if we get some of this out of the way, you can see that there is a strange cable running here. Where does this go? This goes to the front panel, and it's coming from the parallel port. It's actually soldered directly onto four of the pins. I believe these are three data pins and one address pin or something. I can't remember. I looked it up. It wasn't anything interesting. I thought initially they were just stealing power from it, but it, it looks like it's actually interfaced to the motherboard in some way. This is the main heat sink with a crappy loud fan. Uh, under this has both the platform controller hub and the actual CPU. Uh, I think I'll rip it off in a second just to see what's under it since I'm going to throw this board away. The best way I've found to get these little push pin heat sink things off when you don't want to keep them is just simply take your side cutters. Done. Easy. With the heat sink off, you can see the three chips that uh, it's cooling. On the left there we have uh, an SL8FX. That's an Intel uh, I.O. controller, USB ports, that sort of thing. The middle chip is an SLB86, that's the 945 GC Express uh, motherboard chipset. And the funky little one on the right is the SLG9Y um, Atom chip, the 330, which is actually surprisingly 437 balls on that uh, BGA uses around 8 watts. Here's the teeny tiny processor up close. You can clearly see the 
dual dies as it is a dual core chip. Uh, you usually don't see chips in this design where it's actually two separate cores. Um, normally a chip is made as one single die and either both cores are enabled or both are disabled. Usually they laser cut and disable the second core if they're selling a single core chip because maybe the second core is faulty in some way. It increases their yield because they could have a manufacturing defect on half the chip but the other half works just fine. Uh, this one it looks like they're all one-offs and they just package them on the same uh, actual BGA mount. It's uh, very tiny as you can see. I mean we're we're talking the size of uh, about a quarter. This is the little adjustable voltage regulator that's getting up to 50 degrees. Uh, I can't be bothered to fix it or swap it out. As you can see it's quite tight in there. And I don't even know if the actual regulator is defective. It could be something else. I tried replacing all the caps around it and it didn't fix it. But I'm going to take these out and scrap the board. Well, there you have it. That's what's inside a Barracuda Spam Blocker. A cheap consumer motherboard. Uh, standard st serial ATA hard drive. I've read that some, uh, some of these actually come with parallel ATA drives. I guess it's whatever they can get cheap. And a generic rack mount case with a stupid blue plastic on it. Definitely not worth picking up. I mean, if you can get... If you can get this thing for like 10 bucks or, or under 20, I'd say it's worth picking up because you'll at least get your most of your money back from the hard drive and the motherboard if it's working, like <laughs> not like mine, uh, you can at least use in a system somewhere. Uh, but yeah, you're just you're just getting a cheap ass consumer motherboard, so yeah. I, I don't really think it's worth it.